You asked for it in the comments. Here is my bubble tutorial video demonstrating how to use the OpenAI Assistance API. This is brand new. This was only released last week. Um, and I'm probably going to do two parts of this. I'm going to do an explanation in this video about all of the additional OpenAI calls, uh, API calls that are required. Uh, and then in, in part two, I will actually put it into the front end of bubble. Um, but this is a really important explainer because I would say that there is definitely more to it. Uh, to make use of these exciting new features, uh, there are more API calls that are required. Um, but that is 100% worth it in order to get OpenAI handling your thread. You know, they will now store your messages, uh, which means that you don't have to send all your messages through every single time. Uh, OpenAI can take care of that all through their API. I will just point out that some people on Twitter or X, I've seen them saying that this might get very expensive very soon. So do make sure you understand and you check out the costs of, of paying OpenAI to store your messages going forward. But all of that will be demonstrated, will be explained. Uh, I'll be going through the API documentation on the page here and I'll be showing how to link that into the Bubble API connector in this video. Before I launch into it, if you're watching this video, you're probably learning Bubble and there is no better way to learn no code and bubble than planetnocode.com. We've recorded hundreds of bubble tutorial videos, many of which are exclusives to our members on our website. So if you're learning bubble, there's no better place to go than planetnocode.com. Let's dive into this tutorial. And first of all, I'm just going to explain the different parts required in order to get the assistance feature working and also the storing of threaded content and threaded messages. Um, so uh, you're going to need to create an assistant. Um, the way I've understood this, and this is all hot off the press, if you disagree with anything I'm saying, any interpretation, leave a comment below, let me know. Um, but the way I understand this is this is where you basically can set up what was previously termed the system prompt. So the example they give here is that uh, you are a mass tutor, uh, when asked a question, write uh, Python code to answer the question. Um, so uh, I will be using this to demonstrate like a travel agent. So I'll be saying you are a travel agent, um, answer questions about travel and locations. Um, and my understanding of this is that your assistant, you can create one assistant for your whole app if every single conversation is going to be engaging with the same AI persona. Uh, so you can create one assistant and you'll get an assistant ID back and we'll be using that, plugging it into the API connector shortly. Uh, you then have threads. And this, I'd say, is the most powerful feature because... Um, at least according to their press release, there is no longer like a token limit on the scale of your whole conversation, nor do your costs necessarily rack up per API call because you are now only sending the content of your user's message to OpenAI. Uh, and it gets grouped together in threads. So we will be creating a thread and we will be uh, doing things with threads, like putting messages into threads. We then have messages, and so we'll be creating a message and we'll be putting it into a thread using a thread ID. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to be, uh, oh, oh, we'll also be listing through messages because that's n our new way of getting back both the user's message and the AI's reply to the user's message. And we'll then be using run. And this is where you take the user's messages in the thread and you instruct your assistant to go through and reply to them. This is different to how we've had to work with OpenAI in the past um, because when you submit a user's message, that's all that happens. You just submit a user's message. It's only when you run the assistant do you get the, the AI reply. Let me demonstrate this all to you in the Bubble API connector. So I'm in the Bubble API connector. Uh, yeah, here we go. I've installed it and I've got a an API and I've named it OpenAI. I then say private key in header and the key's name is authorization. And then I put my API key in there, preceding it with the word bearer. Uh, I will, of course, be deleting this API key when I uh, upload this video. Um, how do I know how I structure this? Well, let's go back into the API connector and let's go to threads and create thread. And we can see here, it tells us exactly how to structure it. We need to have content type, authorization, and this two, let's flag this up as something new. We have to include this other header parameter uh, because we're using a beta feature. And if it looks a little bit different, like it looks like this, Make sure you select uh, CURL because that's, the, for me, at least the easiest way to translate it into the Bubble API connector. Um, 
So uh, I've got those in place, all of my shared headers, and then I'm going to create a thread. And so I've got a action here, uh, I've set it as an action, create thread, uh, the post uh, destination, I'm gonna get that from here. That's where the API call is going. Uh, and then I don't actually need to include any additional data in here. So I'm gonna initialize my call and I get back a threads ID and I'm gonna copy that onto my clipboard. I now want to create a message in my thread. So if I go under here and then go to messages and create message, uh, I have to copy the structure here. And this is what it looks like in uh, open in the bubble API connector. If I copy the endpoint and paste it in, the uh, the structure that OpenAI provides uses curly brackets around the thread ID. For Bubble to turn it into a parameter or a variable, we actually have to swap that out for square brackets. Uh, and that then lets me insert data into the URL. So I'm gonna paste in my new thread ID. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, add in a message. And I will say, tell me three things to do in London as a tourist and I'm going to initialize the call. And this is where things are different to how we've worked with OpenAI in the past, which is that I get back a response instantly, there's no waiting, and my response is simply the recognition that I've created a message in the thread. I don't get back the, the OpenAI's reply to the message, we're gonna come on to that. I can further demonstrate this by saying, well, what if we list all the messages currently in the thread? Is it just going to be the message I've added in, tell me three things to do, or will it include the AI's response? Well, let's have a look. So I'm gonna use a get command to list messages, and I get that the those details from here. So I insert the message ID into the URL, into the endpoint, and I will then get back all the messages in the conversation. So let's initialize the all data, and you can see the only message is the message that the user has put in to the conversation. Uh, I don't actually have an any AI response yet. Click save. Next, I need to create an assistant, and that's because an assistant is key for, for the run command, which is what I'm gonna come on to in a moment. And so your assistant is setting the tone. And so I'm gonna change this instead to uh, say uh, travel, agent and say you are an experienced travel agent and I'm going to initialize the call and again I get back an instant response and all of this all this is is a confirmation that the assistant has been created and the assistant has an ID so I'm selecting the ID and putting it on my clipboard because now I get to the point where I actually run it and I'm gonna it's only at the point of running it that I get my AI responses or response in my conversation. So I'm gonna paste in my assistant. I've got my structure here from the API documentation on run and create run. And so the uh, only uh, essential data that I place in is uh, the assistant ID. And also again, notice the threads ID in the URL. So go back into here. Copy my uh, uh, copy my threads that I'm working with. This one here. Okay, and now I can initialize my call. And again, I get back an instant response, but this is effectively saying that status queued. As soon as I initialize this call, OpenAI is writing the assistance response to my initial query. Uh, and so now if I go back to list messages, I get my actual AI response, which is here. So it's recommending that I explore the Tower of London. Let's do one more prompt message to and throw uh, in the API connector here to really demonstrate the different steps that are required. And then right away, I'm gonna record the second part of this video because we'll be plugging this into a repeating group and a multi-line input on the front end uh, and it, get a user engaging with it. So uh, I'm gonna create a message in the thread. I'm going to say, um, tell me more about the tower. Oh, I didn't mean to go capitals there. Of London and I'm gonna initialize. And then 
just to really ham home the point, if I go through and I view my conversation, uh, I have my part one, my reply, and then my part two. So now I need to run my assistant again on the run command. And now go back to my list messages. Okay, ah, now this is interesting. My message is empty. That's because OpenAI is still writing the reply to it. Uh, and so I'm going to click save. And then I'm just going to go list messages again. Uh, and oh, there we go, we can see already. Now we have our message about the Tower of London and we can see that this is the fourth message in the, uh, the JSON array. So there you go, that is how we can use the assistant and the threads API from OpenAI uh, to, um, to take, you know, take control, uh, to, to make it, in some ways, we're handing over responsibility for dealing with the, the conversation or the messages to OpenAI. Um, let me know your, your comments, feedback. Uh, is this better than the previous ways of doing it where you had to handle all the messages or the JSON uh, in bubble? Uh, or do you think that this is an incredibly important feature? Also, let me know what you think about the pricing. Do go and check out how much it's going to cost to store all this data um, in OpenAI. Uh, and make sure you're subscribed and you like this video here because part two will be coming out very shortly.